Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are able to communicate through the wonderful means of technology, Lord, before perhaps we were burdened by it, but today now we are enabled by it. So we thank you for it, Lord God, and we ask in this moment that your words would be spoken and that, Lord, as we hear this message, you would encourage us all, myself and those whom are listening. We thank you for your mercies, which are new every morning. And we praise you, Lord, ahead of time for the healing that you're going to provide for us in the holy and heavenly cure of the coronavirus and its complete eradication in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so I woke up this morning and one of my friends uh, posted, I've started this week a new men's devotional group. And he posted it there about planking and exercising and reading uh, and reading the Bible, which reminded me about how much I do it and how much I want to encourage others to continue to do it in this season of uh, lockdown. I think some people are calling it, others might refer to it as um, separation from just our everyday normal working and living lives. Um, and I've entitled this message an introduction to sport and spirituality. Sport has always been an interest of mine. When I was 14 years old, I chose two subjects to study. One was uh, physical education, sport, and the other was business. And I've been doing both pretty much since then across different mediums. Um, so sport is a large part of my life. Um, but much later in life, I came to faith um, from pretty much the age of, I guess, 13 to 27, 28. I was really not a Christian um, and so sport was my gateway, it was the way in which I came to faith um, and this message is based upon that, it's about sharing uh, a word of encouragement through sport and through the, um, the topic of spirituality. Let me begin. The growth and emergency emergence of sport and spirituality is attribu attributed by some scholars to the Anglo-Saxon movement of muscular Christianity. In order to engage with the history, culture and tradition of sport and spirituality, we all have to consider the rise of female participation within sport and spirituality as well. At the Olympic Games alone in 2012, 44.3% of the athletes were female. The, re the rise of female participation, spiritual exercises and its links to spirituality through non-Christian faith practices including yoga, pilates and offer new and interesting developments of sport and Christianity. Romans 12, 1 through 2 explains this well. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is good pleasing and perfect will. Sport provides us with the ability to transform our minds and the Holy Spirit can discern and approve what is God's will. Through Ignatius prayer, we can discern God's will as described by Father Timothy Gallagher of the Roman Catholic Church. The link between sport and spirituality grows through spiritual direction and Gallagher helps us to recognise the ability for an individual to use Ignatius prayer to meditate on the word of God. When we are participating in sport, we are presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. In worship, which is also later explored in new concepts of sport and spirituality. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2 informs us of a more traditional sport and the benefits of continuing to run the Christian race. It says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Running also enables us to get back on the road to a pathway in pursuit to Jesus Christ and ultimately eternal salvation. Today we will explore how together, independently and with God, we can use sport and spirituality to honour the bodies we have received from our Almighty, using the word of God to proclaim the kingdom of God. So what is sport and spirituality? Um, there is a quote here I'm going to read to you from um, a book which uh, is written by uh, Robinson, Parry and Watson and Nesty about sport and spirituality and this is what it says. One mile to go, you are turning right at Big Ben, this is the London Marathon, and into the last mile. 
How can you feel so good when the legs ache so much? But you do feel good. In fact, you feel so good that you will get into a second and third wind. It feels like you are sprinting now, only pausing to encourage some of the guys who have slowed down to a walk. By the time you have reached Buckingham Palace, all the old aches are back. But it doesn't matter anymore. It's like you have been released from your body. It's more than a runner's high. It feels as though you are outside yourself. But at the same time, truly yourself. All these things connect you with your spirit and your real self. Firstly, when we refer to spirituality, we are talking about Christian spirituality. For the purposes of a definition for spirituality, we may refer to the traditional church definition given as the practice of worship, devotion and prayer, which enables an awareness of the Holy Spirit. However, in the context of sport, other denominations and other Catholic and Protestant and other faiths and New Age spirituality call it something else. Marriott and Christella state that this new type of meditation in the running context aims to create mindfulness and an awareness and centeredness in the self. This can be see, perceived as a runner's high, where there is an experience through contemplation of transcendence and direct dialogue between the individual and God whilst running in the Lord's creation. Susan St. Singh states that this is similar to the Greek concept of arete. This is a state of both God's grace, the presence of the Holy Spirit, and God's excellence, the Lord's creation. So then what is muscular Christianity? This is what Uh, An example is, again, from the same sport and spirituality book from Perry Robinson Watson. And this is a nasty and this is what it says. In the playing fields, boys acquire virtues with no books, which no books can give them. Not merely daring and endurance, but better. Still temper, self-restraint, fairness, honour, unenvious appropriation or another success. And all that give and take, which stand a man in good stead. When he gets forth into the world and without which, indeed, his success is always maimed and partial. Playing sports during extracurricular activities can create space for teachers, students, faculty, parents and guardians to come together. The setting, the rules, the boundaries and the stakes are all equal. It's a game which everybody can play, yet the competition and the seriousness are not just about recreation. They are about rank, authority and bragging rights in the classroom. Competition is real and the opportunity to get one over on your teacher or student or fellow peer is perhaps not very biblical. However, the fact that the rules are written, the blood is pumping, the endorphins are going and participants are building endurance means that it's not just sweat and tears, but the virtues, values and variables are becoming all equal. The need to be sportsmanlike is similar to the theme of the Olympic spirit, which provides all people and all nations with the opportunity to represent who they are, where they come from and what they believe in without the restriction of reading, writing or arithmetic. The rise of muscular Christianity appeared during a time when weightlifting, muscle men and sports were perceived to be the predominantly male virtue. Yet the values, virtues and experiences gained through playing sport can benefit all participants and genders when used and wisely in the way God intended. Charles Kingsley cited that these values represented through sport could be learned through play, not study, including endurance, temper, self-restraint, fairness, daring and honour. The foundations of muscular Christianity can be attributed to 1 Corinthians 6.19, which states, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. The reality that we belong to God is not unknown, but the fact that we need to fight, remain vigilant and authentically pursue God may not be obvious. The battles of being a Christian in modern day society create various obstacles which contradict and seek to challenge our Christian faith. In 1 Corinthians 9 through 24 through 25, it says this. Do you not know in a race that all the runners win, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do not get it a, a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize of eternity. 
So by encouraging sports participation, instilling Christian values through sports and ensuring religious influences within leadership sports, within the leadership of sport, we can make a practical and real difference in education and within the sports industry. However, competitive sport, physical based activity and some sports professional clubs and leagues can become idols, their own gods and develop stronger relationships together away from Jesus Christ. However, sport and spirituality together, perhaps the more feminine sister of muscular Christianity can offer a more spiritual, less competitive and intimidating recreational activity to build community, relationship and fellowship together. In female participation, running with a torch was truly an out-of-body experience. This is a, a Elizabeth Hanley describing her experience as the Olympic torchbearer. This is what she said. Running with a torch was truly an out-of-body experience, a spiritual type of experience. The torch was a very heavy three and one half pounds, and running with it should have been a challenge, but it felt like a feather in my hand. As I ran the kilometre over the infamous mountain in the Pelponis of Greece, I couldn't help but ask, was my guardian angel helping me with the weight? Why was I so lucky to run with the torch? It brought to life exactly what the term Olympian meant, harmony of body, mind and spirit. The, Olympi the Olympics create a platform for sports athletes of all nations, people, backgrounds and faiths can be represented in one arena. At the Olympic Games in 2012, Chaplains were available for all athletes across different faiths, including Christian, Muslim, Sikh, Buddhist, Jewish and other interfaith religions. It is in this arena that muscular Christianity, female participation and sporting spiritual influences and all forms of Christian spirit spirituality can coexist. At the London Olympic Games in 2012, 44.3% of the athletes were female and female boxing amongst other sports were represented as female participation increased both at the Olympic Games and globally across sport as a whole. The relationship between sport and spirituality can also be hidden under the title of sports ministry, which can enable neo-muscular Christians to confuse both the theological word of God and thus elevate sport above its Christian heritage, values and virtues already identified by Kingsley within muscular Christianity. Again, from the sport and spirituality book, I will provide a link to this article and quotes which you can get from it. Um, this was written... Uh, last year and it links back to um, my sport and postgraduate certificate that I studied at the University of Gloucester in 2015-2016. The introduction of more contemplative and meditative spiritual practices in sport such as yoga, pilates, zen and other spiritual exercises have increased the awareness, benefits and rhythm which we can slow down, not compete and still be still in, in shape. So by Following St. Ignatius of Loyola, it begins the Christian conversation of practices through pilgrim pilgrimage walks, spiritual retreats and practices which can be borrowed to increase, improve and benefit Christians whilst using sport to improve their spiritual relationships with gods, with God, not other gods. And so that leads us to spiritual exercises. In Ignatian meditation, our reflective capacity is our gateway to the word of God. If I meditate, for example, on the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God, I might ponder why Jesus adds in spirit to poor and why Jesus says that this disposition gives entry into the kingdom of heaven. As I reflect on the scriptural text, I enter more deeply into its meaning, such that the word speaks to my heart and elicits it into its meaning, such that the word speaks to my heart and elicits a response. Jesus, help me to be poor in spirit. Give me a love for gospel simplicity of life. Through my reflection on his word, God speaks that word into my heart and my heart speaks to God. This is taken from Timothy Gallagher's A Handbook for Spiritual Directors and Ignatian Guide based on the Ignatian Spiritual Exercises. The elevation of sport above God's word through muscular Christianity has created doubt in many Bible scholars' minds as to the platform of using sport, motivation and reasoning behind sport being used as an evangelical tool to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. However, through Ignatian sport prayer, together contemplation and the practice of stretching and working out is possible to focus on the word of God whilst honouring our bodies to benefit our spiritual focus, discipline and practice in, alongside an improved physical and mental well-being whilst exercising. 
Gallagher recognises these gifts in the relationship between a spiritual director and a directee of using St Ignatius prayers to inform, discern and educate the decision-making process. Further research needs to be completed to examine if and when playing sport using Ignatian prayer, if it is possible to grow closer to the Bible and improve spiritual practices and disciplines. In contemplative practices such as walking and hiking on pilgrimage, workout and worship on the Psalms, planks and prayers and other practices, there is reason to question and seek to find answers if through independent sport-based spiritual direction and prayer, benefits can include a closer relationship with God and scriptures through sport. In general, it demonstrates through spiritual practices a high degree of social and ecological awareness. It demonstrates a high degree, particularly of useful attitude and understanding that life can be led as a reflective process of growth and transformation. And it liberates spiritually from the confines of religious dogma and empowers direct personal experience. Spirituality continues to change and challenge religious practices and it also creates opportunities to spread to practice sport as a spiritual exercise in the Christian practice of religion. It is possible through running marathons, hiking the mountains, walking pilgrimages, competitive sports, yoga, pilates and other contemplative and non-competitive practices that we can use exercise to gain access to God. The concept of incorporating Ignatius prayer into a Christian practice through the Song of Songs is another method. This fresh approach enables us to explore Anglo-Catholic and Pentecostal forms of worship and workout. In the books Awakening Love, an Ignatian retreat on the Song of Songs by George Cleveland and the Passion Translation Commentary on the Song of Songs by Brian Simmons, we can start to see if it's possible to develop a practice of reading the Song of Songs, stretching and conditioning and meditating and reflecting on scripture whilst in working out and tuning with charismatic or hymnal worship songs. This new practice of sport and spirituality creates opportunities for centering on the word of God whilst improving physical, mental and social well-being and benefiting from an increase of endorphins and through exercise, perspiration and a meditative yet active state, one can work out and worship with God. So the conclusion for this is that the benefit of sport and spirituality creates an opportunity for us as individuals or groups to benefit from an improved physical, mental and social well-being. Reading the word of God by planking, by praying, by reading the Psalms, by reading the Proverbs, all at the same time. The increasing desire to explore new ways to get closer to God is similar to that of a vastly changing and developing sports and spirituality industry. This changing climbing also means that Christians can be open to explore new, yet perhaps traditional practices to overcome obstacles such as decision making, lifestyle choices and reading the word of God. Ignatius prayer and spiritual practices create new and exciting methods to practice sport and spirituality within Christianity. The author, that's me, <laughs> would like to use further research, sport and spirituality, Christian retreats and more in-depth studies to learn about the subject. However, through what little research we've put together in this report, we do have an understanding that sport and spirituality can work together as spiritual practices on a daily basis to improve, complement and fundamentally sustain a relationship with God through exercise, reading, meditating and reflecting on the word of God. So through Lent, I completed a 40 day challenge. In that challenge, I completed four push-ups and four second planks all the way up to 40 so I did 40 push-ups and 40 second planks I'm now going from a challenge through Pentecost from 40 to 100 I'm now going through reading the Psalms I'm planking every morning and reading the book of common prayer and with that I'm, I'm reading and reciting Psalms I'm reading a liturgy liturgy and lunges bible and butt kicks I'm practicing sport and spirituality every day i'm trying to do it and record it and share it with you as an encouragement for your faith and the words the scriptures that i use psalm 13 5 says but i trust 
in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I use that verse as an introduction. I then break into Galatians 5, 22 through 23, which says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And so with these scriptures, I meditate, I read, I breathe and have the word of God with me. And as I meditate, I stretch, I recite the Lord's Prayer. I plank, I do push-ups, I meditate, I reflect as I go through these workouts, as I worship God. Every Tuesday night, I do a workout and worship session at 6.45 US Eastern Time. You are welcome to join me. Every day at midday, I try to put on live my phone to share with you the midday prayer, which includes some of these scriptures, the Beatitudes, which I quoted in this report. Galatians 5, which I just read to you. Also, I read and share with you other forms of scripture as I read and I try to encourage people to benefit from the endorphins, the perspiration, the sweat and the tears and the blood that comes from you, you participating in using sport, pushing to the next level every day by increasing my push-ups, by increasing the number of seconds I plank. And this all works together for the good of Jesus Christ because I read and dedicate my exercise to God. And I, I believe at this time we need to educate ourselves. We need to be aware that God wants us to be active, alive, sharper than any double-edged sword. As iron sharpens iron, he wants us to be alive and spiritually alive. He doesn't want us to be dead to ourselves. He wants us to be alive in Christ. And so we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in using sport as a methodology, as a way, a gateway to get to God. And so today I'm coming online again to share a word with you another word of encouragement at 12.15, but after that, this afternoon at two o'clock, I will do a workout and worship session where I will go through this practice and you can see it live for yourself. There are opportunities online to do lots of exercise, but I encourage you, I urge you to not spurn this opportunity to but use the word of God, sport and spirituality, to plank, to pray, to read Psalms, to read Proverbs. And the Passion Translation is a beautiful way to do that as you play and take part in sport. And so my encouragement, my prayer for you is that we together can do this. And so one of my favorite scripture is taken from 1 Corinthians. It says this, the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so when we use the word of God, we come alive. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. The Lord did not give us a spirit of fear or cowardice, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So let us pray and then we can, uh, we can head out into our days and I encourage you to move, live and have your being as we use sport and spirituality to encourage us in this season of lockdown. Father, we thank you and praise you for our bodies, for your word, Lord, which says that you, Lord, came to this earth. You told us that you are the way, the truth and the life. And so help us to meditate and move and live and have our being through sport and spirituality. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys, have a great day. Blessings to you and your family. And I'm praying continuously for the complete eradication and the holy and heavenly cure of the coronavirus. In Jesus' name.